Hello and a very warm welcome. This is the News on Asia International. My name is Justin Bemuyan. and here are the top stories. Nigeria officially joins the Africa very much for joining us. Nigeria has joined other African countries in signing the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. President Mohamed Buhari signed the document of the ongoing Africa Union Summit in Niamey, Niger Republic. As state House correspondent Adamu Sambo reports. It was a standing ovation for Nigeria and indeed a joyous moment of remarkable significance for African leaders as President Muhammad Buhari puts pen to paper to formally enlist Africa's most populous country and largest economy into the Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. This without doubt is a major breakthrough for the African Union which sees Nigeria as not only critical but indispensable if the objectives of the African Continental Free Trade Area are to be achieved. With President Buhari's signature, 54 out of the 55 member states of the African Union have now signed the agreement, out of which 27 already deposited their instruments of ratification. When fully operational, AFCFTA will be the world's largest free trade area with a potential market of 1.2 billion people and a gross domestic product of $2.5 trillion across member states of the African Union. At the extraordinary session on the African Continental Free Trade Area, speakers including the Chairman of the African Union, Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations and the Director General of the World Trade Organization appreciated Nigeria for signing the agreement, describing it as a worthwhile undertaking. This, they say, demonstrates the common will of African countries to work together towards achieving the vision of the African Union's Agenda 2063, the Africa we want. We deserve to congratulate ourselves on these major achievements that has been made possible thanks to the African nations' will and their faith in the vision of the Founding Fathers. Africans should take particular pride in reaching this agreement at a time of growing protectionism and rising trade tensions that threaten economic stability and progress around the world. This is an event that gives hope to the African people who want, who want to construct a prosperous Africa. Our research and experience has shown that the successful implementation of the CFTA will create synergies and transform Africa into one of the GVC factories like we already have in Asia, Europe, and North America. The African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement came into force in May 2019 and expected to start trading in July 2020, before which some critical preparatory activities are to be undertaken, including effective sensitization of the state parties. From Niamey, the Republic of Niger, Adamusambu, NTA News. In the meantime, African First Ladies attending the AU Summit in Niamey, Niger Republic, have called for a rise in taxes for cancer-causing products such as tobacco and alcohol. The First Ladies also appealed for more effective measures to tackle cancer-related diseases in Africa. State House correspondent Aliu Kabi reports that the First Lady of Nigeria, Aisha Buhari, is also attending the meeting. And now moving on, Nigeria's living in diaspora have demonstrated their strength in diversity and unity of purpose by building stronger bilateral relations between Nigeria and Sierra Leone. And this was exemplified during the inauguration of the 2019 to 2022 Executive Council of Nigeria's in diaspora organization, Sierra Leone chapter, held in Freetown. And Ruth Aguile reports. Looking at these faces, one can hardly tell the difference who is a Nigerian and who is a Sierra Leonean. 
a clear demonstration of the bond between Nigeria and Sierra Leone, who have all gathered to witness this historic and unique moment. For the first time, Nigerians and Diaspora Organization NIDO has been inaugurated to promote socio-cultural and economic development, reposition the Nigerian brand and explore new opportunities for both countries. These new executive members are saddled with the responsibility to steer the ship of NIDO for a prosperous future. The president of Sierra Leone, retired Brigadier Julius Madabio, who was represented by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Nabila Tunis, assured Nigerians of the full support of Sierra Leone government to strengthen the cooperation between both countries. As we tend to structure that relationship, and on behalf of my president and government, I would assure you that the continued support that you're looking for will certainly be provided. And one of the reasons why we have the Diaspora Commission is this. How do we work together, Nigerians and whole, and Nigerians in the diaspora, with consistency, good leadership, and belief, and with the support of you all, will together build a country of our dreams? It is really a challenge and call to service, to serve the people, to give back to the society. The Chambers of Commerce they have built, have staged a committee of Nigerians residents here to come up with an idea of having a stand in the Chambers of Commerce and Industry of this very country. NIDO was formed in 2001 and has since then continued to grow stronger. From Freetown, Ruth Aguala, NT News. And Nigeria is among West African countries to benefit from the training and examination centers for renewable energy and efficiency for ECOWAS certification scheme. And this is to promote professional competence and address quality assurance gap. The executive director of ECOWAS Renewable Energy Center, Praia, Kip Mahama Kapia, says by the end of July, the training certification examination will hold in Lagos, Nigeria. It says work is ongoing for the production of more than 200 megawatt of solar installations. Now, turning to security matters, where the Nigerian Air Tax Force has successfully destroyed additional terrorist structures and killed some members of fighters at Bakasi on the fringes of Lake Chad in Borno State. A statement by Director of Public Relations and Information, Nigerian Air Force Air Commodore Ibikunle Daramola says the attack was executed as a follow-up to air raids conducted at the same location on 28 June 2019. He says the Nigerian Air Force operating in concert with the surface forces will sustain the efforts to completely degrade the terrorists in the Northeast. In the meantime, the Nigerian Air Force is engaging more states in its quest to tackle security challenges in the country head-on. And this was demonstrated at a special operation regiment dinner in Bauchi. In Mahmoud Ibn Mohammed reports. Introduced in the 16th century, the regimental dinner provides an avenue for the Nigerian armed forces to take some time out of duty to wine and dine as well as honor heroes in addition to celebrating battle victories. With the promise to work closely with all security agencies in the state, Governor Bola Mohammed represented applauded the nation's armed forces for living up to their responsibilities. I wish to commend the Nigeria Air Force for finding it very important in engaging its officers on this noble tradition of regimental dinner night, despite the demanding task of maintaining peace in the country. I accept our sincere gratitude for the support the Nigerian Air Force is enjoying from your government and the wonderful people of Bochi State. The regimental dinner was also graced by the Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Baba Bakar, and some top officers of the Nigerian Air Force. In Bochi, Mahmoud Ibn Muhammad, NTN News. In another development, 2,990 young Nigerians have concluded the requisite road marshal assistance basic course 
to join the efforts of the Federal Rural Safety Corps personnel towards ensuring safer highways in the country. The, the Corps Marshal FRSC, Dr. Boboyo Yemi, in a message to the Passing Out Parade, warned the new entrants to be mindful of their conducts and shun all negative tendencies likely to prejudice national security. Mukhtar Abubakar will reports. The 2,990 uh, road marshal assistants, 442 female inclusive, underwent six months basic training at the facility of the Nigerian Army Training Center, Natrak, Contagora. The Federal Road Safety Corps hinted that the course was designed for the new entrants to provide professionalized training to personnel of the Corps in line with the global best practices while assuring Nigerians of the operational readiness and capacity of the Corps towards eradicating road traffic crashes on the nation's highways. These boys had really been trained in uh, the art of regimentation and indoctrination. You know, once you continue with the exercise, you will discover some deficiencies. And once deficiencies are detected, you weed them out. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukuru Yusuf Buratai, in a message assured the core of the Nigerian Army continues support. I therefore urge you all to demonstrate this high level of regimental discipline and professionalism. The joy of the newly enlisted road marshal assistants had no boundary as they get set to take their positions in the service of the country. From the Nigerian Army Training Center, Contagora, Mokhtar Abubakaru, NTA News. If you're just joining us, you're watching the news on NTA International, reaching you from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. There will be more news after this break. Please don't go away. No problem started with the oil boom because the parliament is the assembly of the of the people frontiers from analyzing from topical from issues from across the globe it's analytical educative and incisive traditionally our people you know are, are, are liberal in the sense that they sit down and dialogue among themselves the standards of the products that they bring into the country are not the same standards that they take in other countries where they invest in let's look inwards and fight for the right thing always. Explore all sides of issues. Showing on NT International every Wednesday at this time. Don't miss it. International News, Africa as it is. Well, thank you for staying with us. Now from agriculture, we have a report that in an effort to make Anchor Borrower scheme of the federal government more effective, the Northeast Commodity Association has procured 600 tractors for farmers in the region for positive output in agriculture production. Yusuf Jika reports that the tractors were inaugurated in Yola at Damawa State Capital. The Northeast Commodity Association is settled with the mandate of implementing the federal government's Anchor Borough Scheme is without doubt championing the cost of enhanced agricultural activities that will make the nation self-sufficiency in food production. 600 tractors have been procured and inaugurated by the association to service farmers in the Northeast region for improved food production and security. 
National Chairman Northeast Commodity Association, Sadiq Dawari, said NACAS is not only committed to uplifting the cause of smallholder farmers, but to transform the nation's economy in line with the government's policy on agriculture. We are providing farmers with certified seed, quality fertilizer, good herbicide, and we provide services for optimum yield. Governor Ahmadu Omaru Fintry of Adamawa State promised to partner the association to improve the loads of farmers. He expressed government determination to make agri sector full-blown economic venture. Speakers on the event applauded federal government and NACAS for defeat. Iniola, Yusuf Jika, NTN News. We now move to Yobe State where Governor May Malabuni has said that this that his administration will resuscitate and put back to use state government owned moribund industries to generate more opportunities and enhance the agricultural value chain in the state. The governor disclosed this during his tour of Yobe Politin and Woven Sack Company in Damaturu and Yobe Floor and uh, Feed Mills as Mustafa Yusuf Musa reports. In the last eight years, about 10 industries went moribund in Yobe State, leaving in its wake hundreds of unemployed people, particularly youth, with millions of Naira equipment laying waste. Worried by the trend, Governor May Malabuni went on formalization towards these industries in preparation to resuscitate and revamp them to generate employment and revenue to the coffers of government. During the visit, Governor May Malabuni said the Woven Sachs Enterprise of Yobe State Fulton and Woven Sachs Company, as well as the Sahel Aluminium Company, will be resuscitated and upgraded to spur economic activity in the state. At the Yobe Flour and Feed Mills in Patuscum Town, which is 90% owned by government, the governor was told that the company stopped production in 2012 due to high operating costs poor management and other hamstrings. In line with our determination to revive all the factories in the open states, uh, not only to create jobs to our human youth, but also in addition to other normal benefits that will accrue to the state. During his inaugural speech, Governor Mem Mulaboni said as part of economic policy of his administration to ensure revival of moribund industries to create jobs and generate revenue for government. In Dematru, I am Mustafa Yusuf Musa, NTN News. Now, Greeks elect a new parliament with a center-right opposition mounting a strong challenge to the leftist government. It is Greece's sixth election since the global financial crisis in 2008. The crisis triggered a succession of uh, financial bailouts, with the Greek economy shrinking by 28 percent between 2008 and 2016. An increasing unemployment has uh, thrown many Greeks into poverty. Let's now join Elias Wali Yakubu for review of major global events last week. On this segment of the news, this is another week's edition of the World in Six Days. While several prominent Democrats have blamed President Donald Trump for the deaths of a father and daughter in the Rio Grande River, the president of El Salvador said Monday that his country must take responsibility for the tragedy. The pair apparently drowned while attempting to cross illegally into the United States. A photo of the family provokes sorrow and outrage around the United States and the world, as well as accusations from Democratic presidential candidates Beto and Julian Castro that Trump was at fault for the deaths. Protests on the streets of Sudan has resumed, demanding the military to hand over to a civilian government in that country. More than seven protesters were reportedly killed in the recent clash. Sudan's ruling generals and protest leaders reached an agreement on the disputed issue of new governing body. The two sides agreed on establishing a sovereign council with a rotating military and civilian presidency for a period of three years or a little more. Deputy Chief of the ruling Military Council, General Mohammed Hamdan Dagala said in a statement 
We want to reassure all political forces and armed movements and all those who took part in the change that this agreement is all inclusive and does not exclude anyone. Still in the week under review, China has accused protesters who vandalized Hong Kong's parliament on Monday of serious illegal actions that trample on the rule of law. A group of activists occupied the Legislative Council building for several hours after breaking away from a peaceful protest while hundreds of police used tear gas to disperse demonstrators. The Chinese government urged the city to investigate the criminal responsibility of violent offenders. Monday's disorder follow weeks of mass protests over a controversial extradition bill which critics have said could be used to send political dissidents from Hong Kong to the mainland. Algeria's parliamentary president has quit his post on Tuesday after prolonged demands for his removal by protesters. No reason has been provided for his decision to step down. Deputy Speaker Abdul Razak Tabaj will now run the legislative affairs until a new speaker is elected within 15 days. Bocharev was a member of the ruling National Liberation Front that was led by Austin President Abdulaziz Bouteflika. And in Libya, the UN says it has received reports that on Tuesday that guards fired on migrants who will try to flee a strike on the detention center near Libya's capital, Tripoli. The UN says it believes at least 53 migrants died and 130 were hurt in the airstrike on the Tejora Center. UN High Commissioner for Human Rights Michelle Bachelet said the airstrike could constitute war crime. North Korea has accused the U.S. of being hell-bent on hostile acts despite a recent agreement between the two countries to resume nuclear talks. Pyongyang's UN mission said the U.S. was inciting an atmosphere of sanctions. The statement comes days after Donald Trump became the first U.S. president to enter North Korea as he met Kim Jong-un for talks. And in Iran, its Revolutionary Guards commander Mohsen Razei threatened on Friday to seize a British ship in retaliation for the capture of an Iranian supertanker by Royal Marines in Gibraltar. Razei said on Twitter, if Britain does not release the Iranian oil tanker, it is the authorities' duty to seize a British oil tanker. The Gibraltar government said the crew on board the super tanker Grace One were being interviewed and witnesses, not criminal suspects, in an effort to establish the nature of the cargo and its ultimate destination. U.S. President Donald Trump, while not specifically mentioning the super tanker incident, repeated a warning to Tehran. We will see what happens with Iran. Well, that's it on this segment. Now let's talk sports.